I felt like doing a bit of tinkering and experimenting this week. And since I've received in my mailbags a few stepper motor related things, I thought I'd give that a shot. I've never really played with stepper motors too much, mostly because I've always thought that they're just too much pain in the ass to control. Um, you've got to keep uh, keep track of, uh, of which of the motor leads you're running positive and negative and what phase and everything else. And it just seemed like too much of a headache, especially before the days that microcontrollers became stupid easy to deal with. Microcontrollers like our little Arduino toys that everybody likes so much, like these guys here. Um, but then I found this little stepper motor driver board for silly, silly cheap, um, which I pulled out of the mailbag. Was it this week or last week? Uh, or a couple weeks ago. Can't remember. Anyway, so that makes it a lot easier. But I thought I'd play with the Arduino a little bit too, just just cause I got it, you know. Um, so the stepper motors I've got, I've got these little tiny micro stepper motors. Um, but in my playing with them, I discovered that it was just too tiny to uh, successfully solder onto, and I managed to destroy a couple of them before I gave up and went back to eBay and have ordered some flat flex four conductor um, connectors. So hopefully when those show up in a month or two, I'll be able to get one of these little guys actually moving. But that aside, I've got Zook. Uh, this one that I salvaged from a piece of equipment at work. It is a 24 volt stepper um, and really torquey and really powerful and everything. Um, professional one. I'm not going to play with that today for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's 24 volts and I don't really have a high current 24 volt power supply. I guess I could bullshit one together out of a couple of uh, laptop power supplies, but eh. Not going to do it. Plus, this is a six wire motor, which is what's called a unipolar motor. Um, stepper motors um, basically have two sets of coils uh, in them. Um, and this is actually the wires for this one that I was trying to figure out before and trying to, uh, using my ohmmeter to figure out, uh, what's what. So the two, the two coils are center tapped, which is what makes them a unipolar. Um, and so I, using my ohmmeter, basically I got a hundred ohms between some and 50 ohms between others. So I was able to figure out what the, what the two coils are. If I remember correctly, unipolar, basically you hold the, the center tap at a constant voltage ground or, or five volt or your positive voltage. One or the other doesn't matter. And you put the other voltage, uh, let's say these are the center taps are grounded just for ease of discussion and you alternate the voltage to the other points to get the motor to go around in circles. Um, now there's actually, to complicate things further, there's two different types of unipolar. There's ones like this, which is the six wire. There's the five wire, which is like this one, where the two center taps are tied together. So you'd have uh, one, two, three, four, and then these two being the fifth wire which is how this one worked. This one is super duper common and cheap. It's the one that all of your Arduino starter kits come with. Um, a lot of cheap robot kits come with them. And in addition to being a stepper motor, it's also got a gear head on it. A um, couple ways you can tell that. First of all, the shaft doesn't come out of the middle. It comes out the side. And secondly, when you turn it, okay, you may not be able to hear that, but when you turn it, it's really hard to turn, whereas even with this big one, it's not hard to turn at all. Um, and if you listen carefully when you're spinning it, you can actually hear the gears whirring around in there. 
I'm going to do this nice and simple and easy way. Um, so I'm not going to use this one because I don't have the power to drive it. I'm not going to use these little guys because I don't want to destroy them and I don't have the connector yet. I need to use this one um, and connect it up to the little motor controller board, which tends to come with them. If you look around eBay, you can find the board, the controller board and the motor for only a couple of bucks. They're really, really cheap. And it just, it's already connectorized. It just plugs right in. And this isn't really a control board. It's a driver board. Um, and all it's doing is when you take the, the, one of the four control pins high, it operates, uh, the, or it activates the MOSFET inside there and drives a, a high current path out to one of the four motor coil wi uh, wires and on the power pins on the side you can uh right now i've got uh, just five volts uh driving it but you can have a separate voltage driving it this one happens to be a five volt motor so i'm just using five volts um and we'll get to that in a second the other motor that i've got here which i opened a few weeks before is this one which is another one with a lead screw on it like the little ones um see if you put something on there and turn it it drags it along which acts as a torque multiplier basically so for every rotation of this you only get a small amount of uh push there or of linear distance but you get a lot of torque out of it or you would if it wasn't such a shallow shaft or shallow uh cuts on the shaft this one i was told when i unbagged unmailbagged it opened it found it in the mailbag uh, i'm told it's actually a motor from a computer cd drive which now that i bought i mean, i bought it for cheap so it doesn't matter but let's see if that guy was telling me the truth let's see if there's one in here There he is. There is one in there. Cool. Wow. Even the screw holes match and everything. Oh. Okay, this one. Er, nah. This one I had to solder some wires on because it came without them. That's easy. This one has a little flat flex connector on it. Oh. Oh, with the mating connector, which I ripped off the circuit board in my zeal to get in here. Is that a four pin flat flex connector? Oh, 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 does that match this? No, maybe. No, of course there's multiple different standards. Oh, well, anyway, I've got the connector that meets with that. That's cool. Okay, should I pull that out? Nah, I'll use the one I've got out. I'll deal with this one later. So here we have the stepper motor that I bought, which is the CD drive stepper motor. Um, I should have mentioned before, it is actually called a bipolar stepper motor. It's only got four, wi er, four wires, not five or six. Um, so basically it's just these four outside wires. And in order to, uh, to change the polarity on the electromagnet you actually have to flip the power so this one's positive this one's negative flip it this one's right uh in order to get it to drag along again that's more dicking around that i wanted to do before i discovered these little modules um so this one i've, I've thrown the heat sink onto it that sticks on i've connected it up and here's the pin out that it's written on the back but i also found it online just search for the uh, part number, which is, or is it A4988, um, which is the chip, which is also the breakout board. Um, I found these breakout boards well described on Polu, I think it is, website. 
Um, it seems like they created it, uh, before everybody and his dog in China made clones of it. So that's a reasonable source of information. So what we have here for the connections, just so you can read it. So motor voltage, uh, ground, um, coil two wire B coil two wire A one B or one A one B that's these four wires here going off to the motor, uh, VDD, which is the power for the circuit itself and another ground, um, not enable. So basically when it's low, it's enabled. Uh, that's what that line above it. That's what not means a uh, low active MS one, two, and three. Those three are signal lines to tell it whether to be in full step mode, half step, quarter step, eighth step, 16th step. Um, if you leave them all open, they have internal, uh, resistors to pull them down, I think, um, or to pull them into their, into their normal, uh, full step mode anyway. So I don't have to con connect anything to those. Um, although I could, if I wanted to, uh, not reset, not sleep, uh, again, not so there, uh, it will reset when you pull it low. It will sleep when you pull it low. Um, but, uh, if you pull them both high, then everything's normal and working or all the data sheets said, you just tie them together and they will pull each other. Cool. The two important ones, step and direction, uh, pull direction high, the motor goes one way, pull it low, it goes the other way. And step is just a pulse for each time the motor moves one step, or if you got this in a, in a micro stepping mode, one micro step, still one step, it moves one motion. Let's see this thing in action. I've put a little bit of wire on there just to operate it. Uh, got five volts coming into the breadboard. I have a button on the step. The direction is over here and steppity, 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 step and, all, and along it goes. I'll flip the direction the other way. This switch is bouncy, which is why it's sometimes not behaving. But there you go. I'm getting, I'm getting a little tired of pushing that button though. So, oh, reach over here and grab a handy dandy little 555 circuit. Yes, everybody's got one of those just lying around ready, don't they? Why wouldn't you? I've got a couple of them. I've got another one over here on this thing, just in case I wanted to use it. Um, so I'll just hook this guy up to the positive and negative of that. Okay, so it's pulsing away, as 555s are wont to do. I'll just take this, which is the pulse wire, and put it over there. There, isn't that better? There we see it cruising along in one direction. And if I move the direction wire to the other polarity, uh, in this case ground, it's going that way. So that's super easy. On, on an Arduino normally, you'd need four wires to control it, like this one here. And we've got four wires going over to the stepper controller. And I'll show you this one in action in a second. Um, oh, I'm starting to run out of room here. Go back that way. So that's got four wires. And the and then the microprocessor has to be constantly thinking about keeping the motor going. This one, the microprocessor just has to pulse it. Anytime it wants it to move. And it moves one step and tell it the direction and then forget about it. It doesn't have to keep maintaining the phase on four different wires, which takes a lot out of your programming, which is good because I suck at programming. Uh, let me just pause this for a second and I'll pull that other one in and play with it for a while. So what I've done here is this little nano is connected, has four wires connected off to the driver board. Um, the driver board also has 
five volts and ground coming from over here and just because I don't want to mess around with uh, cleaning up any potential inductive kick from this motor I'm just going to run the Arduino itself off a battery and there we are this code that's in here is just one of the demo, sketch, demo sketches that came with the Excel stepper uh, library and I haven't modified it at all I just just loaded it into here plugged in four wires boom all the magic happens in the library I don't have to think about it I don't even want to think about it but it does take a certain amount of processing on the part of the uh, the Arduino it's got to keep track of what's going on there um, this sketch is uh, about 5k uses 16% of the memory just for this little sketch here and of course the library so I could change the speed if I wanted to I could tell it to go the other direction although I haven't studied up in the library I don't know exactly how yet um, but that's that but I mean okay it's if you're a programmer it's easy if you're a hardware monkey like me not so much here's this thing back again but this time I've got it connected to the logic probe so we can see what's going on on these motor drives motor drive pins um, and you can see how it's being controlled a little bit so I'm gonna start that going We've got the pulses uh, over here you can see the motor turning I've got a black stripe on the shaft so you can see it turning and then we start pulse view running there we've got some pulses in there let's stop that stop that because it's making noise so here's the pulses that are recorded this is the clock on line four and so with each clock pulse it goes um, something changes on the high so as that goes high um, line three goes low line two goes high so basically the, whatever side of the coil line three is on is grounded and that's positive um, so that puts one uh, polarity of magnetism on it meanwhile over here on the other coil uh, line zero is grounded and line one is positive so that's for one pulse the next high of the clock these two don't change this one changes that one drops to ground and this one goes high so that essentially flips the polarity of that winding which causes a, the permanent magnet in the rotor to be attracted in a different way and then the next pulse happens this coil stays the same and this one flips polarity and it just keeps doing that over and over and over again all the way through uh, that's basically what so that's for single stepping um, if I was to go quarter step or the other stepping modes um, these phases would change a little bit actually let's do that hang on here okay so I'm hoping you can hear this thing ticking over and clicking physically clicking so I'm going to hit the first MS line high which should put it from full step into half step mode what that does you've heard it get quieter it's now running slower but it's running but for each so for each pulse it's going half of the step size that it was previously um, so over on uh, pulse view here let's grab a cursor so the time it takes for one thing one 
full sequence of uh, actually no let's let's look at this any given motor winding is high for about 537 milliseconds roughly now we'll, we'll run it and that's showing the half stepping mode now and now that one's high for 673 milliseconds and the low is even longer that's 791 milliseconds so previously it was perfect square waves now we've got something completely different happening up here but previously you were seeing just the two poles out operating completely opposite each other right now we have some time when both of these are at, at uh, zero volts for that time there which means that coil is not attracting it at all and this one is attracting it for let's get the cursor again here so for the period of one full pulse this top uh, coil uh, this pair of wires being one coil is doing absolutely nothing and this one is attracting it uh, it seems to me that these little drivers are a lot more interesting to work with um, a lot easier to work with from my point of view than doing it in software your point of view may differ you may actually be good at software you might be one of those people that likes software Ugh. But for me, I like hardware. I like this. And now that I know where I've got an essentially free source of these motors, that's pretty cool too. And I bet you there's other stiffer motors inside this thing. So I don't know whether that was informative to you guys. I had fun with it. I actually learned something that I didn't know before. If you want to go deeper into stepper motors or understand them at a more fundamental level, I'm going to link a video down below that Kevin Dara did quite a while ago where he actually controls one manually. Um, one of these, oh, that's hot. Uh, a larger one, but uh, basically a, 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 bi a simple bipolar stepper motor. He controls it manually with some push buttons which and he gets out the whiteboard and draws stuff it it does a really good job of uh of explaining it uh so go over give him a watch um and in the recommended videos beside it unless the youtube algorithm screws up even more than it already is you should find other stepper mo basic stepper motor videos this wasn't meant to be a tutorial this is just me teaching myself and bringing you along for the ride such as it is anyway hope you enjoyed or at least didn't tune out halfway through from boredom um i will talk to you later